Hey guys, I'm back. Miss um, Marchese finished up her student teaching. She is getting ready to graduate right now. Um, we are super proud of her and super excited that we had her. She was able to teach us about animal identification systems and some record keeping strategies. Um, I'm gonna be picking back up for the rest of the school year. And we, if we look at the learning packet that is also on Edmodo for you guys, we are gonna be starting unit seven. Um, unit seven focuses on animal digestive systems. So we're gonna talk about cow digestive systems, bird digestive systems, and simple stomached animals like dogs or pigs. Um, Today we're gonna go through slides one through 18. And then y'all are gonna have an assignment to label the ruminant digestive system. If you don't know what a ruminant is, I hope that that is what you get out of today's lesson. Um, the PowerPoint and notes should also be on Edmodo. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open this up. Um, like I said, this is unit seven. There are a total of eight units in animal science one. So we are getting close to the end of the school year. Um, regardless of what the end of the school year looks like, um, if you plan on taking animal science too, these next two units are really, really important for making sure that we're all starting out in animal science too on the same page. Um, so we're gonna start with the digestive process the digestive systems start out with some initial vocabulary um what is digestion um digestion is the process of you or an animal anyone anything taking in food and their body breaking it down into these really simple substances like protein and carbohydrates and fats so that our body is able to absorb it and use those nutrients for things like energy and other bodily functions. Um, the digestive system are the parts that are inside that animal's body that are involved in not only like initially starting the digestive process, which is chewing the food and then digesting it and absorbing it and then excreting it. Absorption is gonna be taking place in the digestive system, specifically in the small intestine of the animal. Absorption is what happens when the food is already broken down into these simple substances. You eat a cheeseburger and it gets broken down into, okay, you got some fat here, you got a little bit of protein here, you got some carbohydrates there. You've got all these things, a little bit of fiber, you've got all these things that are broken down. You no longer have a cheeseburger, you have the tiniest little components of something. You have the tiniest little components of that cheeseburger broken down in your body. When you get those tiny components, then they have to be absorbed. So they get broken down into the tiny substances in your stomach. Once it's broken down into those little substances, then it moves to the small intestine. The small intestine's job is to take those nutrients and send it throughout the body. It says, oh, you got a scratch on your arm? We're gonna send you some protein to that scratch in order to try to fix and repair the skin, because that's one of the jobs of having a protein. Um, oh, you're going for a run, you need some carbohydrates, you need some energy. So we're gonna send those carbohydrates to your body so that you have the energy to be able to make that run. Um, absorption is just the process of taking those little nutrients and sending them throughout your body. So this is just a little joke that I thought was really funny. Um, we're gonna be talking about ruminants today. Um, ruminants are animals that are in this picture. Typically, we're gonna think of cows, sheep, pigs, um, but animals like deer, llamas, and alpacas are also considered ruminants. Um, so in this comic, it's a cow, a sheep, and a goat talking to this guy. And the cow says, oh, so you want to be vegan like us, meaning not eating any animal products or meat. You want to be vegan like us, huh? Sorry, kid, you need more guts, which hopefully will make more sense at the end of this unit. So we are going to watch this video. Um, 
it is made for elementary school students. So it is kind of like, it's very, very broken down. Um, but the speaker does a really good job of explaining like what is a room in it and what do they do. So it's a three minute video. That we're gonna watch. All right, so we go back and look at this little comic here. Um, they're, they're telling this guy, sorry, you can't be a vegan like us. You need more guts. So when they say they need more guts, they're referring to the fact that they have one huge stomach, like the size of like a 10-gallon bucket. Um, they have one huge stomach with four different compartments. So they're saying you need more guts to be able to digest your food or digest vegan food better like us. So um, we kind of already went over this, but as a definition, ruminant animals, they're an animal that has one stomach. All animals have one stomach. A lot of times people say that a ruminant or a cow has four stomachs. Not true, completely false. They have one stomach, but it's sectioned off into different compartments or different parts. But it's still one stomach. It still acts as the same function to break down the food, which is the job of the stomach. Typically, when we think of ruminants, we're gonna think of cows, sheep, and goats. Um, because they're most common, but there's also like llamas, alpacas, deer, camels, those animals are also ruminant animals. Ruminant animals, they digest tons of food. 
Um, and it's all primarily going to be roughage. Roughage is food that humans don't eat because we can't, because our bodies can't break it down. So in that video, the woman said that they eat things like hay and cotton seed hulls and um, corn, like not really cooked corn. They eat all of these things that we can't eat. We can chew the hay, we can swallow it, but I can tell you that when it comes out, it's still gonna be one piece because our body cannot break it down. Um, that's why we feed it to ruminants because their body has been specifically designed to be able to break those things down. Um, a non-ruminant is typically gonna be an animal that has one single simple stomach. No compartments, just one stomach, like us. We're a simple stomach animal. Um, pigs are also considered to be simple stomach or non-ruminants. Dogs, simple stomach, non-ruminants. Um, ruminants don't chew their food completely. They chew it up, they grind it up with their molars or those like those big back teeth that we also have. They try to grind up their food. They swallow it whether it's completely chewed or not and then it rolls around in their rumen just kind of trying to get broken up a little bit more. If it's not broken down enough to move to the next compartment, then it gets regurgitated. The cow basically throws up in their mouth and chews that food again. And they continue chewing that food or chewing their cud is what we call it because it's better than chewing already chewed food. Um, they sit there and they chew their cud for a long time. It's called rumination, which is why they're called ruminants. Um, if you say you want to ruminate on something, then that means you want to sit there and think on something for a while. So when cows ruminate, they're sitting there and they're chewing their food for a while. Here's the picture of the cow's stomach. All food starts out in the mouth. They grind it up. They don't really chew it. They kind of grind it up. They take their jaw and they kind of do this number and they try to grind it into smaller pieces. It goes down the esophagus to the reticulum and the rumen, which is gonna be this purplish color. It's huge. You, this, is, this is like an actual size of the rumen compared to the, the size of a cow's body. It rolls around and if it's not chewed up enough, it gets regurgitated. And it continue, they continue doing this process of chew the food, roll around, regurgitate, chew the food, roll around, regurgitate until it's ready to move to the omasum and the abomasum, which are the other two compartments of the ruminant stomach. Once it gets broken down enough, then it moves to the small intestine, which is where when it moves to the small intestine, we're saying it's as broken down as we can get it. It's in its simplest form and we should be able to absorb it, meaning it's gonna be broken down into carbohydrates and protein and fiber and fat, things like that, because that's what the small intestine does. It absorbs those really small nutrients. It's gonna leave the small intestine and then it's gonna to go to the large intestine. Then it's gonna be excreted as poop. So going through the steps, I think we kind of already did that. The mouth's job is to bite and chew the food. Chewing, not so much. Grinding, yes. It's like if you take your hand and you try to grind up food with the, only your hand. That's kind of what the cow's mouth does or a ruminant's mouth does. The esophagus just serves as the connection. It takes the food from the mouth to the stomach. Um, there is a little esophageal groove esophageal coming from esophagus. So there's literally, there's a little groove in the esophagus. The esophageal groove is only used for little babies, like little baby cows or little baby lambs that are still drinking their mother's milk. If they're still drinking their milk, then there's nothing for them to ruminate. There's nothing for them to chew and regurgitate and chew again because it's all liquid. So if it's all liquid, that esophageal groove catches it and sends it directly to the last part of the animal's stomach because the other parts are there for digesting food. If it's not technically food, if it's just a liquid, it doesn't need to be digested and broken down. 
So the esophageal group catches the colostrum or the mother's milk and sends it directly to the last compartment of the animal's stomach, the abomasum. The four compartments are the rumen, the reticulum, the omasum, and the abomasum. The omasum and the rumen are the two largest parts. So if we go back, you can see how big these parts are. So the cow's stomach is huge, like that big, legitimately. Um, the rumen, it's the largest of the four parts. And if it helps you to remember th that it's called the rumen, think of it, it sounds like room in it. Rumen, room in it. Because there's, it's huge, so there's a lot of room in it. Um, the rumen is filled with bacteria. It's called a symbiotic relationship. The bacteria have somewhere to live. They get to live in the cow's stomach and they get a little bit of food, but they also help the cow to break down the food, like the hay and the cotton seed and the corn and the things that the cow was eating. The bacteria help to break it down. The bacteria get a little bit to eat and the cow has some help breaking down its food. Um, the bacteria help to convert a large amount of the roughage or the food that the cow was eating into tiny little amino acids that are ready to be absorbed. And if it helps for you to put it into perspective, the cow's rumen, like just that one compartment of the cow's stomach, not the entire stomach, but just that one compartment of the cow's stomach can hold 40 gallons. So think of like your two gallon jug of milk. It can hold 20 of those in liquid because it, it's it's huge so looking at the ruminant digestive system you can see that this is how it flows through it starts in the esophagus it rolls around in the rumen and the reticulum and then it gets regurgitated if it needs to be it continues that process until it's ready to move to the omasum and the abomasum And this is just, it just, this just shows you what is in the cow's rumen, or what is in the cow's rumen, just the rumen. Um, it takes cows over 24 hours to break down their food. So they're sitting there and chewing their cud for 24 hours, back and forth. So their rumen is gonna hold about a third, maybe a little bit more of what they ate yesterday because they're still working on digesting it maybe a little bit more than a third here of what they've eaten today. And then the rest of it is gonna be gases. The gases are gonna end up coming from the bacteria as kind of like a byproduct. So this is just a picture. Um, this was a story I saw on Facebook of this cow, this bull that they found in India and he didn't look too good, he looked sick, he wasn't really moving. So they took him to do surgery and they opened up this cow and they found over, they found almost 200 pounds of plastic that the cow had eaten thinking that it was food. Nothing can break down plastic, not even a cow's stomach. So that cow for no, no telling how many years old this cow was. This cow had sat there and had been eating this plastic, thinking that it was food or it was mixed in with his food and he didn't realize and he's just been sitting there eating it, not breaking it down and it's just been sitting in his stomach. 200 pounds of plastic. And then this is a picture of the cow's stomach, of the four compartments. This is one of the compartments. You can tell the difference in the compartments by the way that they look, by the textures. This one has almost like a honeycomb texture. This one is like kind of flat. This one, you've got some pretty deep wrinkles right along in here. So this is how you can kind of tell the difference between the different compartments. They all serve different jobs. So they all actually look very different.
from the inside. This is a cow stomach where they took it and they turned it inside out so that you can see what those different compartments look like. Um, so the rumen microbe or the rumen bacteria, you can hear it called either one. This is what it looks like. Um, it does almost kind of look like a little sperm cell, but it's a very, very tiny bacteria called a protist. Um, and it just, it helps to attach to the food. It works on breaking it down so that the cow is able to digest it and get the rest of those nutrients. So here's the other compartments of the cow stomach, the reticulum. Um, this is where the liquid ends up going. So when they're a calf and they're drinking milk, the liquid comes here. When they're an adult and they're drinking water, the liquid comes here. The reticulum looks like honeycomb. It's these little bitty like square structures. The omasum, its job is to grind and squeeze the food to try to get some more liquid out. And it contains little papilla. The papilla are these little, you see these little like spikes on it? Those are papilla. The papilla's job is to kind of act like little bitty fingers. And when there's food moving around to grab that food so that it can get caught in one of these little flaps. It'll get caught and then it can get ground up. And then the abomasum. The abomasum is called the true stomach because it contains the enzymes and the acids that we think of when we think of a real stomach. So like our stomach has all these little like gastric juices that help to break down our food. The abomasum is where you're also going to find those enzymes and those acids. And the abomasum is going to have this almost, it, it says smooth, but it's smooth relative. Um, it does still have some wrinkles, but it doesn't have like the papilla that the omasum has. It doesn't have like the little honeycomb structure that the reticulum has. It's almost just like these wrinkles. And its job is to just it's the last stop in the cow's stomach where the food has already been broken down, chewed up, the liquid's gone, all that. The, at, when it gets to the abomasum, this is where it encounters the enzymes and the acids for it to be able to fully break down the rest of the food that it's gonna be able to. When it leaves the abomasum, it's in the tiny little nutrients. It's in carbohydrates and fats and proteins and it's gonna to go to the small intestine. The small intestine is, is gonna be where all the food kind of gets absorbed. Um, you're gonna have these little papilla, which again, that's what these little structures are, or little finger-like projections, and it has the same job. Its job is to grab the food or grab the nutrients that come to grab it, and work on absorbing it and taking it in so that it can send it off to whatever part of the body the animal needs. Um, you might see a little bit of bile, which is like when you have those nasty burps and it's almost kind of like acid reflux, that's bile. There's a little bit of bile sent from the liver to help break down things like fats that are hard for us and animals to break down. You might have a little bit of pancreatic juice which the pancreas's job is to help break down sugars and which is why it's really important for diabetics. And a little bit of intestinal juice to help try to break down the rest of it. And then the papilla grab it and absorb it. Whatever is left is gonna get sent to the large intestine. If it gets to the large intestine, the large intestine's only job is to absorb water. The large intestine is really important if you don't want diarrhea. If the large intestine isn't working, it's not gonna absorb the water. And then you're gonna have a lot of poop mixed with a lot of water, which is why we have animals that get diarrhea. That's why we also get diarrhea. Um, so there isn't any nutrient absorption happening in the large intestine, it's strictly water. And then it does add a little bit of mucus to, the, to whatever is left to kind of lubricate the feces coming out. Um, in the cecum, simple stomach animals 
like people or dogs or pigs and then ruminants like cows and sheep and goats don't really use their cecum it's kind of like this little organ that just hangs off in between the small intestine and the large intestine and it's just kind of there it's larger in animals like horses and rabbits and guinea pigs and it just helps them to be able to break down their roughages because simple stomach animals like people and pigs and dogs don't eat roughages we don't go around eating like hay and cotton seed hulls and raw corn then our body says oh you don't need it you don't need it so we have like our, our cecum is this tiny but in animals like horses and rabbits and guinea pigs where their cecum might need to be might be this big because they actually use it it's a lot bigger because they actually have to use it um but it's just kind of like an accessory organ for most animals unless you're a horse a rabbit or a guinea pig it just kind of sits there and doesn't really do a whole lot and then the anus's job is to just excrete the waste excrete whatever's left whatever didn't get absorbed so um how long is the cow's digestive tract the cow's digestive tract from the esophagus through the four compartment stomach the reticulum the rumen the omasum and the abomasum plus the small intestine plus the large intestine is 140 feet 140 feet that's crazy that's probably like if all of us lay down on the floor in class foot to head foot to head it would probably be like all of us laid down would be the entire length of the cow's digestive system the esophagus is two to three feet so not like super crazy long but maybe like half of our body height the four compartment stomach is only about three feet because it's it's more circular not really stretchy or long the small intestine is where we get like all of the distance because the small intestine is where the absorption happens it's where it takes in those nutrients so the small intestine in all animals is very very long because it's quite possibly one of the it's quite possibly the most important organ in the digestive system if the small intestine isn't taking in nutrients or isn't doesn't have enough time to take in those nutrients then we're not going to get nutrients and we're going to be deprived we're going to lose weight we're going to look kind of sick we're going to have to eat a lot more to be able to break down or to be able to get the nutrients that we need so the small intestine is really long so that oh nothing got absorbed in the first 10 feet whoops moves on to the second 10 feet a little bit gets absorbed there moves on to the third 10 feet a little bit more gets observed a little bit more a little bit more making it very very long in hopes that by the time it gets from zero feet to 130 feet all the food that needs to get absorbed is gonna be absorbed and then the large intestine is only about two feet long because its job is to just take out the water totaling 140 feet insanity Hello. Well, this is nice. Hmm. Let me refresh real quick. Um, but I believe that was like just about the last slide. Y'all's assignment is going to be using this PowerPoint. You're going to type over it what each part is pointing to so this arrow right here or this line right here is pointing to the animal's mouth so this is the mouth then the second one you're just going through the animal's digestive system and you're labeling it because this is a cow you are going to have to label the different parts of their ruminant stomach the reticulum the rumen the omasum the abomasum you can use the powerpoint but you're going to need to go through and write down you can you can write over so if you just do a text box you can type over it that's the mouth you can do a text box type over this is the whatever um so you can just type over what everything is 
and then submit it that way. Um, but that is everything for today. Good to have you guys back. Um, I have Zoom lunches Tuesday and Thursday from like 1 to 1 30. If you guys have any questions, if you just want to hop on and talk for a bit, please feel free because I do miss you guys and hopefully I'll get to see y'all soon. But take it easy and let me know if y'all have any more questions. See y'all.